What's up guys and welcome to this week's episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always Headphones Neil with a slightly compressed episode for the week. Mostly just guys didn't get to watch um, a lot of new stuff but I have a little bit of a progress update on everything that I've been watching and then I do have a film review to watch for this week. So last week I got to thinking that because we're in October it's the time of season for Halloween and scary movies and things like that. I thought I would knock a couple of or at least start knocking off you know horror movies that I haven't seen off my bucket list. So this is kind of classic horror movies. Um, things I'm kind of looking right now or, or I decided to originally look at films prior to around 2000 to 1990. So really old films and see why they're um, considered you know classics or cult classics or how they managed to probably start you know a stream of uh, sequels and spin-offs and things like that so the movie i decided to start with was the exorcist and in this case the exorcist director's cut so um sad to say in all these years i have actually never seen the exorcist i do know of it in passing so i know the theme song i remember i know the scene of the girl spinning her head backwards and that's really about it um i never actually saw the movie in full but i have heard of it so i was like you know what I'm going to start with that one, see how it is, how it holds up after all this time, and just see what I generally think of it. And overall, I want to say it was very well done. It's very methodically paced. It's very um, suspense building. So um, it builds things up to talk about that original priest in, um, I think, Europe or Egypt somewhere who comes down with something and then they bring us to the United States and the girl gets possessed by a demon and then the um, all the stuff that happens with her but then also the difficulty that um, her mom goes through and finding trying to you know talking to doctors to find a cure them not doing anything ultimately going to the church and then the uh, priest guy telling um, her that why doesn't she go to doctors and then also like exorcisms haven't been performed since like the 1700s because it generally just doesn't happen um and oddly enough regarding that priest for the um initial part of when i saw him on screen i was like why does this guy look like a very weird looking al pacino and it looked and it actually turns out in the trivia they did want to approach or they approached al pacino to star in the film i think in that role but then they found this guy so they found kind of the not necessarily knockoff version but like a lookalike al pacino so um and then also al pacino without all the um outwardness and um you know al pacino isms and all that so um overall and then that priest was a good thing or or was a good touch i liked his acting in all of it that he was a psych uh psychiatrist or a psychologist now he's a priest and you know putting together the pieces taking it to his superiors and having to you know see how he can help the the mom and her daughter um the one thing i wasn't expecting was that scene when the girl or when the priest walks into the room and the daughter is and i'll put it this way just because it was a weird scene to watch um or a hard scene too that she was mutilating herself and just all the stuff that's coming out of her mouth once she gets possessed um i mean all that stuff that she was saying because kind of uh, manageable and dealable but um just when she was mutilating herself was probably the hardest part to watch luckily they didn't you know go down the road of doing it multiple times and um she was closed so there was that so uh luckily so luckily it was only that one time but that was probably the hardest part of the movie to watch um and then of course they had the part with her head spinning around so i was like okay the, you know i am watching the movie i was expecting and so by the time the end of it and then the priest you know tells the demon to um get possessed in him and then he commits suicide so 
um, and then the um, police officer and the other priest go to lunch. So I was like, all in all, it was rounded off very well to the point where I kind of now want to go down that road of watching all the Exorcist sequels to see kind of how they deal with, you know, all those priests and the police and how the exorcisms progress into all the different films and how they change it up and deal with all those various things. So if you've never seen The Exorcist and this is the original one from way back in like 1979, I definitely do recommend giving it a watch. Um, it is a slow paced movie, so it will, it does take time to build up into things, but, and it doesn't have too many jump scares. I think there's only one or two, like when a phone rings and then with the, all the stuff with the girls. So it's not necessarily jump scares, but you know, scare factors, things like that. So, and it's not necessarily as crazy as the things now that we see. So, you know, the, with the things like the Saul films and probably all the sequels and all of that stuff. But when you're watching it, you can see that it was a groundbreaking film in the horror genre for what it did so now it makes me also want to go back and see prior horror films and see how they handled um horror and what they, you know whatever they thought of like would be the scare factors for the time so um with that being said the next film that i plan to watch is the original 1982 poltergeist i have also never seen that movie so i do want to see that and see how that holds up um now and what um why that film um has the reputation that it does and i'm also currently planning to watch after that the omen but i actually haven't decided on that one just yet so um as of now i say i'm gonna watch it and then we'll see in the next couple week or so if something else comes to mind does a better film to watch but uh, that's kind of the schedule over the next couple of weeks of the other horror films to watch to get them off of my bucket list. Um, so with that being said, um, uh, the season two of Loki has now started. So I had a chance to watch the season premiere. I haven't had a chance to watch the second episode yet. So I, and, but I do plan to watch it in the next couple of days. And overall, it's basically a recap episode. We have uh, Loki now, or not a recap episode, but a episode where we, where we see Loki jumping through time, not being able to control it. So he's going through the different eras of the TVA. So he, at one point, he does get to the present version and he's trying to tell Mobius about what's going on. And he jumps to a past version where Mobius has never met him and different people in the TV have never met him. And then um, we meet a new character, which I think is the kid from Indiana Jones. Um, or And his name is Ouroboros, or he goes by OB. So um, Loki and Mobius meet him in the present. Loki jumps back in time to before OB has even met Mobius, and definitely not Loki. And they set up a thing to have them travel to through time to help stop that cutoff of time because of the guy who is everywhere or whatever the guy um now i'm forgetting his the actor's name but um with him being gone now that now time is all over the place there's no one monitoring stuff um all the clippings that are going on where they're um stopping all the variants and deviants and all of that is causing a big ripple through the time space continuum so they have to figure out how to stop that and um, allow loki to live which at the end of the episode um we're not sure what happened so we'll see kind of what the i the situation with the season is but it sounds like they're gonna deal with um no one being or the timekeepers not being there and that guy who just exists or the guy who's everywhere not monitoring the situation so um that kind of feels like we're, we're gonna get a little bit more i guess in the not in the multiverse but in the tva version of it so uh, hopefully we get to see how that uh, factors into the mcu at large um and then i had a chance to finish stargate atlantis season two so we're up to the point where um the wraith were able to get the um database of planets and find out how to travel all the way back to earth so they're planning their attack there so I think the start of season three is going to deal with that. So um, that's on the schedule to watch or to continue watching to um, finish up season three. So like I said, I think last week, I think I stopped somewhere in the middle of season three. So everything after that should be pretty new. So 
I should be able to get through um, season three pretty fast as well, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. So no real update there, but um, they're still on the search for ZPMs and powering the city, keeping it hidden from the universe, uh, slowly starting to make alliances and meeting other people. So they found, for example, an abandoned and not really functional um, Atlantean warship. So um, things like that. So like I said, it's Stargate light, so not as much um resources and personnel as sg1 but or stargate command but they're doing what they can with the resources they have and then to round it out i'm continuing my playthrough of doom 2 the plutonia experiment so i'm in the third episode or approximately so um we have um the doom guy um dealing with the initial onslaught and then traveling to a the base I think on Jupiter it was and dealing with that and then by the end of it realizing that he's that um, hell has attacked earth because not all the portals were closed that the ones that the t um, UAV or UAC um, open so he's now d dealing with that so overall a pretty interesting game very well designed levels um, it is a lot more in um, hardcore even on the easier level with all the various monsters because you have you know cyber demons and barons of hell and kako demons and all the a lot of the various enemies more early on than the prior games so it makes it very challenging and then in researching one of the levels i did see that there was an exit to the secret level so i thought you know what i'll give them a shot and or at least give them a shot now see how they are because the exit was there and I, I will say I did of the two uh, secret levels I did like the cyber den level because you deal with four cyber demons but you have to unlock the doors to deal with them one at a time they're caged up by the humans so I guess someone figured out a way to catch cyber demons um so you have to I guess kill them for whatever reason um the second secret map which you only get by finishing the first secret map called go to it is the harder of the two maps where they basically give you an onslaught of every single demon in the game pretty much so you have cyber demons and spider masterminds and anacrotons and i think barons of hell um arch vials and revenants and demons and everything so it's a whole lot of demons and i think it's just about everything where the kill i think there was something like i want to say either 165 or 205 demons to kill in the map and like it's the highest like kill count and all of that so you do have to deal with it in sectors which i tried to do but it ultimately falls apart i think for me as an amateur gamer it's not a level meant for me because you have to you know follow a particular path and get use the soul spheres at the right spot and use the right weapon so that you can pick up the keys and ultimately finish the game and even if you get to the part where I, for example, where I was having the biggest issue with all the Barons of Hell and Anacrotons in one map, or one sector of the map, even if you finish that, there's still another part of the map where you have to deal with Barons of Hell and four, I think three Cyber Demons and Revenants and Shotgunners and all of that. So it's a very, very difficult map. So if you go into it thinking that, oh, I played Doom 1 and 2, I should be fine. Um, I would definitely say that no, you would need the experience, or I would say it's more for the uh, advanced or better than average gamer because of all of the enemies and the path you have to follow. You have to have really good, you know, aim and dodging abilities and strafing abilities and all of that. So I will admit that it's not me that that is able to do that. So um, I ended up turning. So I played for. I think I tried that level for like an hour and a half. Um, so that video is up on the YouTube channel. I tried for like another half an hour the next day just to see if I could make any progress. And I made some, but not enough to make a dent in it. So I ended up turning on God Mode, giving myself all the ammo. So maxing out on all the guns and ammunition and finishing the level because I was like, you know what? I'm going to be here forever if I don't uh, finish this level. I mean, I could technically skip it, but I was like, I wanted to see the end of it too. So I did turn on God Mode and finish the level. And then I forgot to turn it off. So at the beginning of the following level, that as part of the list of regular levels, I forgot to turn it off. So I, there is that. So I did end up turning it off. Um, but just a heads up there that um, I did turn off God mode mostly for the purpose and sake of finishing up that secret level because I did want to play through it and see how it is. So assume that you know I could kill all the enemies and you know um, get through the level. So. 
I did take a little bit of cheating to get through that, so but I will admit that I did that um, for that sake that I know I'm not good enough to finish that map called Go To It. So um, with that, I'm back to now the regular level. So the rest of the gameplay for the Plutonia experiment will be um, just regular gameplay and all of that. So and then I'll make note anytime I do have to use God Mode or whatever. Um, I assume that none of the levels now should be as hard as Go To It. Um, but we shall see because of course with my luck in two levels it's going to be that hard again or something so um, in any case I'm enjoying the game though very well designed very good maps and it keeps my interest for each and every level um, and then I did finish and so also since then I did finish um, one extra level the omen which I don't know that it's uh, which is what made me think of the omen the movie to watch that as well uh, which is an easy level compared to the two secret levels so i was able to get through that um but all the gameplay is now up on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel and zero one and i've been giving general progress updates of my gameplay so if you follow me on the socials anywhere that is listed on the website you can get those regular updates um along with past episodes subscription links and all of that good stuff at headphonesneal.reviews but that is all for this particular episode, and like I said, for next week, I plan to have uh, Loki Episode 2 watched. Um, I'm going to get try and get uh, some Stargate Atlantis in as well to at least catch up through the middle of Season 3, so at least I can get knocked that out and everything else will be new. And if I do more, then um, I'll give that update as far as how far I've gotten. Continue to play Doom, watch um, Poltergeist, and all of that and whatever else comes up uh, with the walking dead daryl dixon i'm watching that as well um i guess he by the end of the episode he talked to carol back in the states they were able to get that radio working and she supposedly found someone um i couldn't make out what who she said she found but when i was listening to the talking dead podcast the unofficial one was from the hosts that live in canada um i guess they heard that it sounded like she found rick potentially so um, that actually does seem to make sense because um, AMC just put a trailer up on the, their YouTube channel that um, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, starring Rick and Michonne, is set to release in February of 2024. So that may very well be the case that um, Carol has found Rick. So we'll see. Uh, and because I haven't seen the latest episode of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon yet, um, we'll see how it factors it with that and the over the course of the rest of that show. So that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.